Hey everybody, welcome to Ham's Homestead. Thank you for showing up for the video. Today we're going to talk about how to cut uncured or green bacon from a Boston butt. Now Eric's going to explain the three types of bacon. Yes, yeah, so when I posted this, the pictures of me doing this in the groups, I had a lot of people uh, respond that they didn't know you could get bacon anywhere other than the belly but uh that's not true uh, a lot of the supermarkets don't tell you that but when you uh buy a shoulder or a boston butt they call it but it's a shoulder or the back straps of the pig you can get bacon from the back strap and from the shoulder or the boston butt if you say and the belly. That's the three places you can get bacon from off of the pig. Before we get started, I wanted to give everybody an update on my recovery. And I wanted to thank everybody for the prayers. Mm -hmm. um, everybody asking Eric how I was doing. It is really, really appreciated. Mm -hmm. I'm currently doing physical therapy twice a week and, and on my own. Um, it looks like we got at least one more surgery to go on my lower spine and then one more surgery on my upper neck. So, long road ahead, but keep the prayers coming. We appreciate them more than you realize. Yes. Yes, always feel free to ask about Mary if I'm online. Uh, send those prayers. They're greatly appreciated. Okay, so let's get started. All right, um, as I said in the picture post, I would demonstrate how to take a pork shoulder and cut it off the bone and select the bacon from the pork meat or from the sausage meat or ground pork, whatever you wanted to do. But first of all, I want to address the glove issue. I strongly recommend anytime you are processing a homestead raised pig or a wild boar pig to wear protection um, because pigs can carry numerous uh, diseases in their blood that are some deadly and some that can uh, cause serious illness uh, to people. Uh, my wife will tell you some of the things that you can come in contact with. The two most common pig diseases is coccidiosis. It's very common in suckling pigs. It's caused by three types of coccidia intracellular parasites. If you have any kind of animals on your homestead, such as goats, chickens, especially goats and pigs, they are very common to get coccidia. And you know, if you test your animals like we do with the microscope, you have to give them medicine. And I mean, it is a whole ordeal. So we highly recommend if you process your own animals to wear gloves. And you'll see us this summer do that when we process our meat chickens. And then also they carry foot and mouth disease. Foot and mouth disease is caused by a virus. It causes um, fever, blisters, lameness, loss of appetite, excessive salvation. And in some cases it can even cause death. And if you're a parent, you've heard of foot and mouth disease because it can be highly contagious. Yes. One child can give it to another child which is another reason why we strongly recommend if you're processing your own meat to wear gloves. This has gone through a USDA process facility, so mm -hmm. therefore it's been properly drained of the most of the excess blood. And approved of any pathogens before it can be packaged out and sent out to the consumer, which is why Eric's not wearing gloves at this time. Okay. I'm going to uh, cut through the demonstration and cut the bone off. As you see, it's a pretty large 
chunk of meat here, but there's a bone in here, and we want to take this and fillet it into two parts. The part with the fat will be your bacon. That's obvious. But one thing I want to mention is this doesn't have it, but sometimes you'll buy your meat and depending on where you buy it, it will come with the skin. All you have to do is fillet that skin off and leave your fat. Then you're left with your skin. Sometimes we do that. We'll take that skin and make pork rind. We'll fry us up some pork rind. We like that. Homemade pork rind. Sometimes we leave it on and use it for our bacon. It makes a pretty good bacon. But I also want you to see that the sides you're going to keep for bacon will be the underneath side, the side that I have on the glass. That's the side we want to keep. This side here will be either your ground pork or casserole, whatever you want to make. And this here can be used for sausage as well. But we'll find that bone right there in the center. And it is a T-shape. We want to cut that bone out. But we also want to be careful and mindful of where our hands are. And we're going to keep everything. We're not going to waste anything, even the bone. The bone is excellent to use in cooking beans in a crock pot, cooking collards all day, anything like that. You can make a stock out of it and can the stock once the stock's been brewing all day. We try not to waste anything on the homestead. And now I have here the chunk of meat that I'm going to use to grind for ground beef. We did sausage. I didn't do a video. Uh, I didn't know I'd have a lot of people interested in it. So I didn't do a video on the sausage, but I will uh, do this video here uh, on the meat, ground meat. But this here is how you get the bone out here. Is take and follow the bone right out like that there and just take the bone as close take the meat as close as you can to the bone remember this is going to be your bacon meat you want it as thick as possible and you don't want it all butchered up so just take your time with it make sure you get the bone get all the bone out like that right there and this part is the part she's talking about that right there is great for stock collards I love it in collards because that meat falls off into the collards and it makes a tremendous pot of collards there you're left with your bacon this is awesome awesome love it my wife and I we don't do a lot of curing but we do cure we're gonna do a video later this summer on curing we use a brown sugar mix when we cure. But my wife don't um, eat a lot of salt because of her condition. So we back off of the salt. But sometimes we do, do cure some because uh, we do like it. But here's your slab of meat right here. And that's going to be your bacon. And what you can do, there's two things you can do as far as cutting your bacon. You can cut your bacon long strips like you see in the grocery store or you can do like we do we cut it up into small pieces and see this here with no fat i'm just going to trim it now i got some more over there that i'll do on the demonstration that i cut up earlier that's going to be my ground beef there i'm mm -hmm. in my ground pork right there now this we cut like into small pieces more manageable it's if you some people use electric knives I use a sharp knife but I take and cut mine this way short pieces I like short piece baking because it's not like the grocery store like I said it don't shrink as bad as grocery store it's green bacon not cured bacon but I take and I cut short slices like this here off my bacon but one thing is you got to put this in the freezer for two to three hours. Just keep a check on it. When it's nice and firm, it's ready to go. So what we'll do is we'll take a quick uh, break from the video 
get this stuff froze up to where I can cut it for you guys, and we'll be right back. Hey everyone, we're back. We've let the meat sit in the freezer for about two hours so it could harden up some to make the cutting part easier for us. That's generally what you want to do so it doesn't fall apart when you're cutting it. Now Eric's going to show you how to cut the bacon. Yeah, it's nice and firm now. I'm gonna cut the short way here. I hope you can see pretty good here. Um, try to keep them good and straight. This first one, I'm gonna just square it up with it. Like that. I like mine about an eighth of an inch thick. Or a little thicker. It or a little thicker, thicker but That's all there are to it. You just cut them like that right there. And like I say, a lot of people, it depends on preference how you cut them. I'm just old school. I like doing it the old way. It's the way I've always done it. I do have an electric knife. A lot of people like to do it with an electric knife. If I'm in a hurry, sometimes I'll do it with an electric knife. But I like taking my time and just cutting it. And I'll get you a close-up of this one. I just like cutting it. And that's a nice piece of bacon. Nice and thick. A little more than an eighth of an inch there. But that's a nice piece of bacon there. The only thing with using an electric knife, sometimes electric knife can have heat with it. And that kind of goes against the whole point of freezing it to make it easier to cut. Now I do want to mention with us doing it this way, we control the price of our meat. We can buy a Boston butt anywhere from $249 to $299 a pound. And when you're buying them in a dual pack like we've done, it it's wonderful and you also control the amount of fat content that you have in your bacon in your sausage and in your ground meat product you can't find sausage good sausage for $2.49 a pound or hamburger meat for $2.49 a pound and you sure can find bacon for $2.49 a pound. And the key to cutting it is letting it firm up. If it goes to getting soft, stick it back in the freezer. You know, if it takes you a little time of getting this stuff cut, stick it back in the freezer. You don't want it, you don't want it soft. Now see, that right there is a prime piece of bacon. You got fat all the way through it and a good bit of meat. A lot of people don't know that there's bacon other places than the belly. There's two other places. Um, you got your back strap and you have the pork shoulder, what we're cutting here today. 